Hello my fellow readers. In this video I'm going to be talking about All of Us Villains. This is a fantasy by Amanda Foody and Christine Lynn Herman. Um, I did pre-order this book and I just wanted to share this quickly because I have it here. Um, the gift with pre-order you have to like prove purchase. Um, but then the gift with it was this cool pin, uh, Blood Before All. So I just thought it was cool. That's a cool pin. It's going on my my bag with all my bookish pins. I, <laughs> gonna be honest, I got this book because I fell in love with this cover. I think this is great uh, cover design and I think that the title of the book is cool. So yeah, I just went ahead and pre-ordered it because I was like, uh, you know, it's YA, it's fantasy, uh, it's dark. Um, I like the title. <laughs> I like the uh, cover illustration. I'm gonna give it a try. Uh, so I went went out and I I just gave it a try. I bought it. This is another one that took me by surprise, but it's really really hard to describe this book without giving away certain things or or making it seem too simplistic. And I I think that's really the struggle that I have when trying to like review it because I can't I can't give away too much of it but I don't want it to seem less intriguing than it is. Um, this is a dark fantasy and this is essentially a battle royale setting. So in this book, um, we're in this, this town, this area, uh, where magic is possible, but the magic is essentially controlled. And the way that they control it is every like blood moon I think it is well I shouldn't say every blood moon but uh one blood moon every generation <laughs> there is a tournament held among certain families uh, especially I think I, I'm trying to remember if it was seven or more than seven but anyway there's there's a it has to be more than seven anyway there's a tournament held where every generation they pick a candidate from these select families and they put them into the tournament. The, the person themselves may not want to be in it, but what do they care? <laughs> they send them in there. Some families choose somebody intentionally to get rid of them. Uh, some families believe that they will end victorious because maybe they always have for every generation or maybe there's deceptive tricks uh, that they've used, uh, deployed for several generations. But in general, uh, they take the kids, send them uh, to the, the tournament battlefield, which has uh, this magical barrier surrounding them. So the kids are locked inside until a victor is found. And uh, they're forced essentially to kill them, kill each other, <laughs> not, not themselves, but each other. Um, so yeah, battle royale stakes. Uh, there are certain magical items that come down uh, that they can go and um, take for their own for their protection or to help battle. So there's like one that's a cloak that um, is protective and then there's all these other pieces. So I'm not going to get too into that. <clears throat> and on top of that, in the locations are, well, I shouldn't say in the locations, in the tournament grounds there are locations that the uh, representatives can go to and they can not, not hide themselves but um, have kind of as, as preparation for attack you know and that really is the goal is to get the better location to get the uh, items and to <laughs> sometimes to take advantage of other players um, and survive uh, now what makes this good is that you do see the different families and the representatives from the families, the main ones. I, you don't really get to see all of them, but there's main ones that, that the book follows, the narrative of the book. Um, and you see the backstories of where they're coming from and either how they were forced into this uh, tournament, like being the representative or um, not giving too much away, but maybe how they force themselves into the tournament. <laughs> um, and it's, it's just, 
I don't know. I liked the characters. I liked the darkness and I liked not really knowing how this was going to turn out and whether whether people would die or not. <laughs> that sounds bad, but like you you get to know so so many, again, not all of them, but you get to know so many of the characters that you don't want to see them defeated or or die or or also you don't want them to to have to kill another of the characters. Now, I didn't get to say, but the the main goal of this whole tournament is that whomever wins uh, essentially gets control over all of the high magic in the region. So I, well, I think that anybody is able to use lesser magic. I think the high magic and its control is, is done so by the victor of this tournament. And again, this happens every generation. So every generation, one of the families gets control over the main high magic, um, for the area. And a lot of, obviously a lot of power, comes with that. Um, so it is a highly sought after commodity and does make the families, you know, push people forward to try to win that ability. This does have some unexpected twists and turns. I think especially um, the ending had me kind of like, what? <laughs> um, and I was nervous because when I first got this book, I thought this was going to be a standalone. Uh, but as the story's progressing, I'm like, this needs much more um, time and development. Uh, and then I got to the end and I realized that, yes, there's a there's a book two coming. Um, I'm glad of because I I want more time in the world and in what it's what's being built there um, and the characters and character interactions. And we don't just see those those kids that are are being sent to like die. We do see like some other people and maybe the machinations that are happening that are, that's causing the the current tournament and i for one can't wait to see more and get more revealed and maybe see i don't know just what's going to happen um this is another one probably before this i i read the second one i'll probably do a reread of this because there were quite a few characters and like family backstories uh, like I said, that I think I'd want to remember all of those details before I jumped into the second one to continue, just because it's it's been a while now, and I don't know when the second book is being released. I think it is this year, but I can't remember if it's summer or fall. And who knows, right? Because maybe it's expected, and then it won't. It'll be pushed back. So we'll see. Either way, I thought this is just a pretty fun, cool story. Like. You know, does it have similar vein to Battle Royale and uh, The Hunger Games? Yes, but not not quite. Because one, I don't know how the outside world of where we're set is. <laughs> is there an outside world? Because it's just interesting. Like, like, if you take The Hunger Games, this is like a huge like, country. There's the districts and the kids are forced. This one is like... I feel like a smaller area. <laughs> I don't know. I could be wrong. I could have misread that. And so I'm like, what's going on in the larger world? Do they know that these magic users are going crazy and sending kids to die? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'm overthinking that. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Personally, I just thought it was dark and cool. I'm trying to see um, who wrote some of the stuff here. Victoria Lee is on here. Katie Rose Poole, who wrote There Will Come a Darkness, is on here. And there's a couple, a couple of good authors. In general, I would say if you want something that's a little bit dark and twisty, but also kind of fun, <laughs> um, with very complex relationships, especially as people are in this dome of death, um, and meeting and interacting with one another, then I think you should give all of us villains a try. I very much enjoyed it. Yep. That is it for this video. Until next time. Bye.